Do you get really, really stressed when exam time comes around? Or are you someone that just sort of sails through everything calm and confident and everything else? Do you want to know some simple step-by-step -step tips to keep your anxiety at bay when, when exam time comes? I'm going to share that with you and so much more in today's episode of Going Deeper. So welcome to the show. Welcome to today's episode of Going Deeper with John Morris. Join the show that tackles the topics that many around the world struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. From mental and physical health to emotional and spiritual well-being. But that's not all. John also shares his teaching on more focused topics, such as anxiety, self-image, gaining employment, the importance of educating oneself, developing a deeper spiritual connection, mental and physical well-being, and so much more. Want to be the best you can be? You're in the right place. And now please welcome Mind, Body and Soul's very own John Morris. Hey folks and welcome to another exciting episode of Going Deeper. I am your host John Morris and welcome to the show that's designed to get you from where you are to where you want to be with step-by-step -step guidance. As always reminding you, I never teach anything that I don't have first-hand experience in. And with that in mind, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, tell a friend because it could be the very thing they need to hear in their hour of struggle. Now we've got that out of the way folks, we want to talk about exam stress. It's coming up to that time again of the year and it's been a really weird year, hasn't it? You know, a lot of people weren't able to sit their exams because obviously of COVID and, and everything else that was going on. And now we've got people that are so unfamiliar with the exam system and the exam process that they're freaking out about it. So I want to give you some simple step-by-step -step tips to really help you keep calm, keep level and in some ways actually enjoy the exam procedure. So step number one is this, you got to be aware, okay, you got to be aware of when your exam is. Okay, and that's hopefully gonna give you enough of an indication of how long you've got to prepare for this exam. Okay, so you gotta be aware. You gotta be aware. And what that'll do is it means rather than cramming all your study into one night, which will cause overwhelm and anxiety. What you need to be able to do is to list things out. If you followed me on this show for a while, you know that I'm a big, big believer in lists and in mindset training because mindset obviously is the core of everything and lists prevent you from getting overwhelmed because you can see everything that's there and you can see everything that needs to be done. So what I would suggest is this. Write out all of your exam um, your, your exam timetable, okay? And then write the date next to your exam. And write them in order. What that will do is to help you see what's coming up first, second, third, 10th, 15th, whatever it might be, and also how long you've got from now to when your exam is. In doing that, it means that you can start preparing for the, the first exam, the second exam, you know, and what I would suggest is if you've got an exam, for example, that comes up in the third week of July and you've got an exam that comes or you've got four exams that come up in the first week of July, then what you need to do is focus mainly on the four uh, or the four first exams, okay, the closest ones, okay, and then as time's going on, then you start focusing on the other ones, but focus on the, the, the bite that's coming towards you, basically, okay, don't try doing too much. The second thing that I would do is not only to uh, list things out, but then to develop a plan. Okay, so I want you to develop a plan of when you're going to study and how you're going to study more importantly. Because you could say, well, John, I'm going to study, you know, whatever time it might be. And you find what time works best for you and then figure out how you're going to study. Some people work best uh, learning online, like what we're doing now with videos. Some people work best with a coach. Some people work best, you know, sitting there reading books. I work best visually and audibly um, because that's the way my mind works and certainly with visual dyslexia. Um, I remember when I was studying and I sat there, I had the books open, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading, and as a teenager that didn't know any better, I just couldn't get anything. I, I didn't remember anything and it was tragic. I didn't do well on my exams for that very reason because the way I was trying to learn when I was in school, which was the traditional method, was the way that, again, the majority of people learn, but it wasn't the way that worked for me. I found out several years later when I went back for my English uh, and maths hires that, uh, you know, I, I could sit there 
but the way that the teacher taught was very different. She would have visual uh, and audible videos and presentations that were there that connected with me, that connected and helped me focus into these things. And I can still remember to this day um, sitting watching the reduced works of Shakespeare companies um, portrayal of the, uh, the, the full works of William Shakespeare and a lot of the information that was there was enough to trigger an association because that's the way our brains work to trigger an association that would help me remember the facts that I needed to remember so how you learn is really really important okay so you've got your plan and you've got your list that's really important the third thing that I want to suggest that, that you do is this Set aside um, periods of time and decide for yourself, only you can decide this, not your parents, not your grandparents, no one else, only you can decide how long you're going to study for. Okay, some people work best, if, if in me for example I put on the audiobook and I listen to the full thing, sometimes I listen to it two or three times, but each time I get a really, really good idea from it, okay? So you've got to decide how long you're going to study for. Some people work best studying for half an hour. So you've 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off. So it's 30 minutes of study and then 30 minutes of chill, relax, play a game, do whatever it might be, go for a walk, whatever relaxes you and puts you in that state of mind. And when that 30 minutes are up, then you go back to studying again, okay? And that's going to help you develop what I love to call the, the, the least of disciplines. It's one of my uh, old teachers, Jim Rohn, uh, that used to talk about the least of disciplines. This is something that you can use, not just now, but in your future life as well. Because what happens is this. If you are really, really focused with yourself, say you're going to study for four hours, okay? Oh, so, so, sorry, let me reframe that. Let, let's say you've got four hours, okay? And for two of those hours, you're gonna study. For two of those hours, you're gonna relax, okay? And it's 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off. Set a timer, okay? So as you know when you're studying, bang, 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 ding, click. You stop studying, okay? Now it's your 30 minutes of relaxation. Again, set a timer. You know, you chilled out, you relaxed, bing, straight back to studying. What this is going to do is, is, again, it's called least of disciplines, and it's going to mean that you are developing a discipline within you that means that you're going to do what, you're see, what you see you're going to do and what you've decided for yourself that you're going to do. Okay, what that will do is to build all the other disciplines in your life. Now, some people may not be very, very naturally disciplined. It can be learned. It's a mindset. There's no difference between you and me. Remember that. Some people are very good at being disciplined. They can do it to the, to the very second, you know. Um, but it's really, really important to do that. So once you've got your list, once you've got your plan, and then decide how long you're going to study for, that's when hopefully you're going to start seeing results and test yourself. Okay, so test yourself. If you've got a, an oral exam, if you've got a written exam, you know, read the page and then close the book and then say, right, how much can I remember? from this. I mean, the whole thing with exams anyway is a bit ludicrous because basically it's it's about, you know, it, it's, it's a test of who's got the better memory, pretty much. Um, that's a topic for another time. That's not this topic. Right now, you want to know how to reduce your stress for exams and you want to know a step-by-step -step plan that will help you do that. Hopefully, if you do this, the aim in doing this at least, is that you will be able to go through these exams calm, cool and collected, knowing that you know, you know the facts. So it could be, I'll, I'll just uh, elaborate on the, the, the final fact, in fact. In fact, in fact, that was a good one. Okay, so when you study for, for half an hour, maybe do 20 minutes of study. And if, if it's maths, let's pick maths, okay, because it, it's easy for my brain to work with. If it's maths, okay, and you're studying trigonometry, statistics, uh, you know, algebra, whatever it might be, you study for 20 minutes, close the book, 10 minutes, what can you remember? You know, ask yourself the questions, you know, what can I remember about this? What can I remember about this? A lot of the books now that you will get, a lot of the study books, have questions in the back of the books. Again, that didn't happen when I was a child. That wasn't even around um, until I was at university age. So that's something that hopefully will help you. And then, you know, keep working on it, keep practicing on it, keep focusing on it. If you know that you are struggling, you know, in certain areas, focus on that. Because if you know that you can sail, sail through with times tables, adding, multiplication, you know, all of that kind of stuff, um, subtraction, you know, and division, then 
you know, if you've got that, then great, you don't need to focus on that as much. But if you are struggling on statistics and trigonometry and algebra and, you know, all the other things that, that go along with that, that's where you need to put your area of focus to raise your skills and when you do that that means that you're going to be now really really well rounded you're going to be able to go into that maths exam hopefully you know feeling more confident and hey even if you're you know 50 percent sure of your you know your, your simple equations and then you know even if you get to 30 percent you know that's still an increase of 30 percent that you wouldn't have had had you not done that. So I hope that really helps you. So remember, in this we've talked about making a list. You gotta get a list, it's a priority. Um, making a plan, making sure that you are aware of how much time you're gonna spend doing your study and making sure that you stick to it. Least of disciplines, remember, it will affect the rest of your life. Really, really important to do. And then the final one, you know, focus on, in some ways, the, the areas that you aren't so confident in, that you need to develop, that you need to build up. And if you do that, that should hopefully be a winning success formula for you. Let me know how you did. I would be really, really interested what you thought about this, if it's something that you worked. If you've got your own methods, let me know in the comment section below because I'm always looking for new tips, new ideas, new ways that you know of, of study that people are finding really, really successful for them because it means then I can be a better coach. And that's ultimately what one want to do. And when we're talking about coaching, if you're interested in coaching, even for exams, you can get in touch with me directly at thebattlesweallface.com or drop me a message in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And uh, you know, you can get in touch with there. We've got group coaching and we've still got a couple of spaces available for one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I think you will absolutely love it. Very, very easy, very, very simple to follow step-by-step. -step. And I work with you where you're at, no pretenses or anything like that. So guys, hope you've really enjoyed this episode of Going Deeper. Get in touch with us as always at thebattleswheelface.com. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Tell a friend because it could be the very thing that they need to hear in their time of struggle. And aside from that, I will see you same time, same place next week. Take care. Do you, your son or daughter, struggle with direction, clarity and purpose? Maybe you struggle with anxiety. Maybe you struggle with self-esteem or confidence issues. Maybe you've got great ideas, but you've no idea how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Don't worry, you're not alone. People around the world struggle with these issues. Hi there, I'm John Morris. I'm the coach to the creative mind and I'm also a psychologist in training. For the last two decades, I've worked with people from all walks of life and all over the world, all with a wide variety of issues. I've worked with people from youth groups to adult education to people dealing with day-to-day -day living issues. And each one of them has an amazing story to tell and we've helped them get clear as to where they are and clear as to where they want to be. And I want to help you too. Like a lot of life coaches and therapists that like to drag things on and leave you dangling on the carrot, I want to make sure that each and every single time that we meet and have a life coaching session together, that you never ever leave saying, man, that was a waste of time, or I didn't get the value that I desired. I am committed to making sure that each and every single time we meet, you are one step closer by the time we finish to a goal that you have in mind. So why should you work with me? Well, let me tell you, as I said, I'm committed to making sure that I provide value, that I provide something that's step-by-step -step and easy to follow. I'm also a fantastic listener. I've been blessed with the gift of listening and I love to listen to people, their stories, their, their dreams, their desires, because there's nothing more energetic and passionate to me than when a client gets their first desire or they get that goal or they hit that big target or whatever it might be. And also, as a trifecta, I am committed to you to helping you take action. So whether or not it be deciding on the university you want to go to, deciding on the course that you want to be in, helping you get excited and passionate about your work environment, whatever it might be, I am committed to helping that happen. I'm also committed if you need to shed some pounds, if you need to gain some muscle mass, if you need to, I don't know, develop your self-esteem, I'm committed to helping you take action and following a step-by-step plan of action that we can put together. But now folks, I want to tell you about the Early Bird Special Offer that we are launching right now. It is for 10 people and 10 people alone. That's right, if you are interested in having life coaching sessions with me one-on-one, -on -one, 10 people have the opportunity to do that and we're looking to help these people change their lives completely. We take ages 14 and upwards, so if you're interested in learning how to get from where you are to where you want to be, to really develop that passion 
to live a life that you enjoy as opposed to a life that you wake up and think, ah, oh. you know, how to develop and change your mindset from maybe a negative one to a positive one. Understanding what fuels your mindset and understanding what creates the kind of life that you want to live, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. As I say, this is open only for 10 people and once it's done, it's done. So click that box below, get in touch, let's have a conversation backwards and forwards and see if we're a fit for each other and I look forward to working with you. Have an amazing day folks, take care, God bless and I will see you soon.